down here, got it all settled up on the beach, we're ready to be set up, um, got a shelter but to be quite honest with you there's no wind, there's no real need to, for a shelter I don't think at this stage but we've got it just in case we need it. Um, what's critical of anything about this rod rest is this little nut, it's black, it's small and when it gets dropped into the shingle you're going to spend the rest of the night looking for it. Again, little fiddly bit. Get the rods. Similar looking rods, but they actually aren't the same. Um, the story of these rods is that for many years I was a great ziplex man. Um, pendulum casting, multiply reels, with a reel at the bottom of the rod. All very technical, very complicated. Took lots of practice. And so consequently I hadn't really been fishing for a while. And then popped into Tony Kerridge's shop in, in Eastbourne, Tony's Tackle. Got chatting to him and he was raving about these new rods, new technology. Look at them, they're tiny. Compare to the thickness of my finger, they're really thin, but they're as strong as anything. Butt section with an incredibly sensitive tip. So, beautiful piece of the kit. It's a similar looking rod, but it's just another notch up. In the technology came in evolution, extra sensitive, synthetic energy in movement. Uh, yeah, beautiful rods. And I was casting these just off the ground, chuck with a fixed ball reel, way further or as far at least than I was pendulum casting using all the, the top techniques that everyone was doing back in the 70s and 80s. Yeah, and the technology's moved on with a fixed ball reel, you can use um, braid line. I'd be a bit nervous about using braid and a multiplier for casting. Um, not to say that you can't do it, but I would be nervous about it. Right, let's have a look at the rods. The reels. I'm getting my words all touched up tonight. Other thing that I purchased, you can buy, you can spend a lot of money on fishing beach lanterns, and yet if you go to Screwfix, other companies are available, you can buy these workplace lamps, and they are more than bright enough for what you need. about 12 pounds each as opposed to the, the money you pay the one that was designed for fishing see I've got my rigs all ready set up ready to go got a selection of rigs hoping for some decent fish tonight so I'm not using little hooks I'm using quite large hooks um, rather have one decent sized cod than a 50 little item but we'll see get bored I have got some smaller rods smaller lines and rigs so first reel we've got here I really haven't got a clue what the manufacturer this is yeah but it's a it's a big broad spool deep spool um, uh, fixed ball reel um, nice big knob of a, of a handle and very good um, you can see that it's got orange shock leader on it it's a tapered shock leader uh, and then underneath that is um, I think it's 20 pound eight strand power line or something along the lines of that. Now what you have got to be careful with these reels is as you lease the line off you don't let it drop off because if it spools off the front of the spool like it's trying to there you will spend the rest of the night untangling that. So let's get that one there. These little clips great because they feed through they will feed through the eyes of your rod so you can leave a clip on here it's trying to 
escape from E. It's not lit it, there we go. Right. So we'll put this one on this rod. don't want this loose line because it will just get away from you. So these clips feed through the eyes. The eyes are very slightly oval, they're not round. Which again just aids in feeding a clip through. I'm not sure there's obviously some science gone into that. It allows the line to feed off them more smoothly when you're casting. Ooh, a bit of breeze picking up, might have to get a shot right after all. Same thing again, be very careful that you don't lose control of this line. This is a slightly narrower spool, but it's a deep spool, which is what everyone favours for distance casting. Same type of line, but it's just a different colour. It's an eight strand fire line, fire wire. careful not to lose control of this and as I say you will spend the rest of the night and I have, I have learnt that to my cost this line doesn't want to be on this ball it wants to be out it wants to be free Behave yourself, that's it. Just a little bit, a bit of resistance, an over sport. Again, take the shot leader, this one's a clear one. Again, same thing, breaking straight, I think it's 60 at the tip and uh, goes down to 20. New technology, always used to use 50 pound line, but it's a great big horrible knot that you can hear clattering through the rod rings as you cast now with these taper leaders you, it's a much smaller neater knot this black stuff you see on the tip is meant to be reflective but I have to say it's not very effective we're going to put on here then watching a lot of um, John Locker's videos on YouTube and I have to say you, you're always, you, 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 you never know it all, there's always something new to learn and, and something that I've resisted for many years is circle hooks but I watched him using them and I thought, oh, I'll give them a go went out on the boat um, at the weekend yeah, what everything people say about them is true that they really do 99 times out of 100 hook the fish in the corner of the mouth very nice, very good very good so I'm sold on them and we'll be using them more in the future so what we've got here we've got a pulley rig I'm going to take some line because I've got a bit too much out here I think we've got a pulley rig so the main line is hooked to a pulley all right and we'll see when we, we bait hook the uh, actual bait for the cast you'll see that it makes it nice and neat and tidy um,
We're going to have a breakaway lead on the bottom. Um, these are Gemini leads, those produced. Um, again, very nice bit of technology. You know, you buy the mould, you buy all the fixtures and fittings, uh, you provide the lead uh, off a church roof or something like that. And then this bit here at the top is the actual bait clip. You see it clips the bait, it clips the hook into that little tiny recess there, and then when it hits the water, that pushes it off and releases it. And the clip, the, the gripper wires snapped in place so that it grips on the seabed, but then when you when you strike, it brings out and it pulls the lead away. So good, another bit of kit. Again, I've been using breakaway lead since the beginning of breakaway lead time but this is just the next bit of technology see these um, things for tying your rigs to just a bit of pipe insulation cut into lengths so they fit in the tackle box like that Got beads above and below the runner is you want to protect those knots okay you know any striking against the knot is that those way where you'll have a tackle failure when you're playing that specimen fish have a little breakaway same idea oh, actually no we're going to use a different one because this one this is something i've rigged up already it's actually got the the, uh, the bait catch what the part that's part of the rig so we've got a breakaway here that hasn't got a bait catch on it frozen black lug it's actually quite nice big leg lug worms uh, and we've got some frozen cuttlefish what we're going to do is we're going to fish a little cut off there on one rod and then we're going to fish a bit of a cocktail on the other and the way that i like to tackle my cocktails up is as follows I'm going to take the envelope off the cuttlefish wings and the skin so it's nice white flesh this is cold this cuttlefish because it's still quite frozen and then we're going to cut a strip of this cuttlefish we've got a few strips we've got some already made up okay. so we've got a strip of cuttlefish and we've got a worm so let's get the first bit of cuttlefish this is cut this is actually bird spike wire would you believe stainless steel wire but in two put a couple of fish on one like this feed it down over the spikes and then we'll thread a worm on the other spike these are pretty manky frozen worms but it doesn't matter because what we're going to do is we're going to use the magic bait elastic tie this up into a little package and the cuttlefish kind of keeps it rigid and the worm is sitting there oozing its juices out attracting that great big fat friendly cod in so we're getting a fresh cod and juice now I haven't got a cloth but a bit of wet shingle it's great for wiping the hands off and then we'll come over to where hooks are That's my phone ringing. Can't really answer it. Covered in fish. Cuttlefish and elastic. Let's 
see I've got the hook being tied into this nice and proud all the way up the line so basically it's a cuttle and black lug sausage back up again Beautiful bait sitting there on the hook. All we need now is to cross the final belt and braces if you like this to help us keep it out straight is we've got a panel hook. Not really there to catch the fish, it's more just to keep all in line. So we'll wrap the line around there. this bit of cuttle we're gonna we're gonna tie the cuttle on as well only because it's got a survivor cast so particularly as it's semi-frozen lovely little baby cuttlefish it's a miniature size thing that you'd give the thing you'd give your budgerigar just asking to get pecked off by annoying little fish around that just to keep holding it in place so just to streamline it a little bit cinch that in. So there we go, two nice baits which should survive the uh, cast. So let's get those out and then we can start setting up our camp. And then we'll set up our camp and cut it. Oh, see, I forgot. So let's put this one out first. So let's see how this hooks together. So we've got that hook sticking out, which is our our main hook, that nice circle hook. It goes in, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's a little tiny arm there. There yeah, that's it. The hook's in there, this pulls down over it and holds it in place. It's this little shield, when that strikes the water that'll push that up and release it. Bits of, bits of elastic floating around, I don't want them to get a shot. Done. No, even though it took a little bash on the same on the shingle, it's all right, do the same thing on this one. A little fish and cuttlefish sausage. Hooks in there, 
locks in place. Right. Breakaways are all set. That's where it's all going, out there in the sea. Oh, last thing, we want a finger fob. A finger fob just to protect my finger when we cast it. Whoops. So this little thing here goes over the finger. That stick goes over the wrist. Pins setting in the bottom, so you know, let up. Let's release this up a little bit, so we can walk back up the beach. Feeding line out. Don't want it so tight that it breaks the wires out. So we're keeping it under tension, but we're using the free spool or the running spool just to let out this bit of line we come up the beach and of course remember to tighten that off so you want to have a certain amount of resistance you don't want it loose so that it starts leaving out sure you get a good bite it is and this is a secret so don't tell everybody this it's guaranteed if you get a cup of tea in your hand you will get a bite which means you have a cold cup of tea all right well it's a lovely evening on the beach Everything's up, shelter's on. I've got a right rattling, rattling bite on my rod at the moment. Oh yeah, oh
make your way back to the sea. The sea's that way. Stupid fish. There you go. Swimming back on the beach now. Not that they're exactly doing the business tonight, but I'm sure we'll find out now. Now I've got rid of the panel part of the rig. See if the circle hook does the business. And you can see the juice is coming out of that manky worm, can't you? Which has gone all the way to the top of the bait. All the way down. And then just cinch it. Okay, pull the pin out, pull the pin, and here you've got beautiful scenty bait. Look, do his job. Be too quick to judge. 